If you think about it, humans as a species have existed for hundreds of thousands of years. And in that time, whenever we wanted to move around or move something around or construct something, it all had to be under muscle power or the power of animals' muscles. For almost the entirety of human existence, if you think about it percentage-wise, we've just used oomph to get human stuff done. And during that whole time, the average age of a human was like 35. Yes, there were people that lived too much older than that, but it's really low like 35 because a lot, of, a lot of kids didn't make it. And then like a hundred years ago, we unlocked the power of the machine, of steam engines, of fossil fuel engines, uh, combustion engines. And then across that hundreds of thousands of year time scale, just in the last century or so, we discovered the power of the machine and then the power of the computer. This unlocked so much for us. This put us on a different path. Our life expectancy, for example, with science and industry has increased by at least twofold. That's crazy, and no longer do we use the power of the muscle for everything. We have machines and combustion engines to do all of that work for us. So despite what it may look like, if you're just on social media all day, things, by a lot of metrics, are getting better. Humans are progressing in such a way that prosperity is increasing without taking as much from the planet Earth. We can probably do this. It will probably be fine. I wouldn't worry about it at all. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's me. And no, no. No, of course they won't. Yeah, yeah, as long as the Martian base is ready in time, we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll see you in a few months. Okay, love you. No, I, no, you hang up. Oh, you hung up. Oh, sorry, I was just... We can do this. We can solve the world's grandest problems. You'll be fine down here where I'm also will be staying with you. Hello and welcome to another edition of Because Science Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all of your comments, questions, and corrections, and then I look at the upward trend of the best nerdiest comments and corrections, and I address them directly. Am I repeating myself like three or four times? And then I tell you what's coming up next on this channel, hint, He's named after a famous project during a world war, and he's also naked. Oh? But getting right down to it, in the last episode of Because Science, we are trying to figure out the true power of a falcon punch. I said that it would be like a Saturn V rocket taking off on your face, and that's because of the immense velocity that fist would have to be flying at in order to create flames on it. You can watch the full video pinned down in the YouTube comments below or wherever you're watching this, but I want to know one thing, and one thing additionally. What did you have to say? Dollskin7, ew. Oh, it's a rock band. My bad. Dollskin7 says, so Captain Falcon can cook a chicken with just one falcon punch, huh? You gotta stop it. You can't cook a chicken by punching it. Yes, that's even if you're falcon punching it. Why? Well, if you're punching something with that velocity, because it is so fast, like Mach 7 or between Mach 7 and Mach 8 like we calculated, necessarily speaking, the fist will be in contact with the chicken for so little time, there will be very little time for any heat transfer. And beyond this, the chicken is going to be obliterated by this kind of force, a Saturn V rocket amount of force. Think about applying that to a chicken. There ain't gonna be any drumsticks left. I'd be surprised if you could find the bones. I would. <laughs> Frequent commenter Infinite Asim and Super Nerd has a comment. He says, rip to all those ignore air resistance questions we had in physics class. Who must feel so redundant right now, LOL. The reason why most physics courses, or at least most introductory physics courses like you may have taken and I definitely took, the reason why you always ignore air resistance is because for most normal-ish things, moving at normal-ish speeds, it doesn't really matter. Unless you are going super fast, unless you're free falling through the atmosphere like skydiving, unless you're considering hypervelocity projectiles or like a falcon punch, air resistance doesn't really come into play. We are middle-sized things that move at middle-sized speeds, not very fast. When we run on a track, air resistance is there, of course, but it doesn't offer all that much drag. So in most introductory physics courses, we don't consider it because it's just an additional layer that doesn't really matter for the calculations, but 
in certain circumstances it is very important, especially if you're going fast enough to burn your gloves off. Shadow Blades says, I'm gonna start calling my hand a re-entry capsule for my bones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What is what is your body if not a spacesuit for the consciousness that is the meat brain part of you? We feel like we're behind our eyes, but uh, ancient Egyptians reportedly did not feel like they were behind their eyes. They located their consciousness somewhere around the heart. Can you think of what it would be like to feel like you were here instead of feeling like you were here? Weird, right? <laughs> what were we talking about? Oh right, the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode I have to give to Ryan Gibbs, and I don't feel good about this one, because he definitely baited me on this one, and I took the bait, but it's still good, so here we go. Ryan says, here's how you get into footnotes. Love your show, Kyle. Been watching for a year and watched all the old episodes. Blessed be Argan Oil. You are the perfect combination of brains, beauty, and brawn. Well, what can I say? You have my attention. You pandering piece of- Now here's some math. When you fart, the mass of that is about 3% uh, of a gram, and the sun is 10 to the 30 kilograms. So the sun has the same mass as, uh... Oh, uh, 10 to the 34 farts. 7.7 .7 billion people in the world at an average of 14 farts per day, don't know where you're getting this number, gives you, wow, 100 billion farts per day about, um, with uh, 100 trillion farts per year. So multiply that by the billions of years, oh, the entire existence of the universe, and you get 10 to the 23 of these events would produce in the length of the universe. Okay, so number of farts, in the lifetime of the universe with current population. Where are you going with this? Okay, so it would take a hundred billion times the current age of the universe for the current world's population to fart out the mass of the sun. You had me in the first half, but in the second half, not gonna lie, you lost me. But that's a lot of farts. And for that, you were, we're gonna do this low kick. I'm not happy about it. And for that, you're indeed a super nerd. You happy? But thank you for saying stuff about my hair. Uh. Oh, and before we move on, of course, if you want to be a super nerd, it helps to watch everything that we're doing on the Because Science channel. So if you want to stay up to date with all the videos that we are posting, especially the videos that we talk about here on Footnotes, go hit that subscribe button that you can probably see on your device and then hit that bell to get notifications turned on and you will be caught up with all the nerdiness, especially the fart sun numbers. And moving right along to our corrections, of course, I'm not always right. So what, did I get, so what did I get wrong last week? I couldn't think of anything I got wrong. Well, Carrie Noir, now frequent commenter, has a correction who says, well, if 74 million newtons of force doesn't make sense for a humanoid to create forceful enough to basically kill anything in one hit, as you've already covered, Captain Falcon is wearing gloves, what if instead his gloves are coated with a fairly flammable combustible substance which ignites with the falcon punch? Another commenter, Batsu84, says something similar where if you look at footage from the other Super Smash games, it doesn't look like his fist is igniting in flight, but rather it ignites beforehand. <laughs> his fist ignites beforehand. Ha! And then he punches that fiery fist forward. That would kind of invalidate all of my aerodynamic heating arguments, wouldn't it? It would kind of, <laughs> it would uh, kind of invalidate an entire week's worth of work and production and a whole lot of my time. So what I'm gonna do is respond by blocking you and reported for harassment. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, I know that a lot of commenters had the same correction and I've seen other videos like those from Death Battle say that fire is happening before Captain Falcon even punches. And I know that's a thing, but I wanted to still cover aerodynamic heating for two reasons. One, pyrokinesis isn't a thing. And two, I wanted to go through aerodynamic heating and go through all that math because this is an educational show. I do not like the kinds of explanations where we can't really learn anything. Yes, I could say that for whatever reason, Captain Falcon has a power where he can just ignite his own fist at will, but what do we learn from that? It doesn't give us any real physical principles. It doesn't show us how to do any math. That's why I went with the aerodynamic heating and the actual FAA equations, because I think we actually get something out of that. So even though it might not perfectly fit with the canon, I think it still could produce what we see, and that's what I like. Math and just the math. Our next correction comes from A. Aaron, who says, Hey Kyle, love the show. 
Uh, question, would there be enough air in front of Captain Falcon's fist in that short of a distance to create fire? I mean, you're talking about spaceships and stuff, so would this apply to the fist as well? Love from Germany. Oh, just greetings from Germany. Hmm. I wanted love from Germany. Well, that's a very astute observation, A.A. Ron. Yes, we are considering all of this heating to happen more or less instantaneously. However, because we are using the amount of time it takes for the glove to get to its ignition point, the time, we are figuring that, yes, you are going at a speed such that if you encounter air at that speed in that short of time, then it will produce at least the amount of heating to bring the leather glove up to its ignition temperature. It's probably a lot more complicated than this, but we are going with very basic assumptions here because we're not experts. We're just trying to get close to what this fictional, not really existing thing could really be. And this ties into our next correction, which comes from Jose Carlos Gomez Vasquez, who says, hey, Kyle, love the show. Ah, it's the only thing keeping me alive. He says, quick question with that FFA equation, the Federal Flying Administration, I guess that makes, I guess that's also fine. With that FAA equation, does it apply to everything or just aerocraft? Since we know that our hands and Captain Falcon's hands are not made of metal, does it truly apply here? Yeah, I don't know. When doing fictional calculations like this, as we often do on Because Science, we have to take what we can get. Obviously, no human fist has ever traveled at this speed through the air outside of like a supersonic jet or something like that. No Captain Falcony thing with a human fist has ever happened, and we'll get to that a little bit later on. So there are no studies that can tell us exactly what would happen to a fist-shaped thing. So we have to take what we can get. I took re-entering spacecraft math and applied the radius of a, of a fist hoping it was in the same kind of shape as a re-entry capsule and use that math. Is it exact? I don't know. Is it off by some order of magnitude or some percentage? Probably, but we have to take what we can get because no actual science has been done on this. My goal is to get at the basics of what might be going on to hopefully engender in you some kind of passion or excitement or interest in the topics that we're talking about so you can go on to further research them. We are probably never exactly accurate on this show except for the Thanos butt thing, which we were 100% accurate on. So the learning is the most important part. Are we 100% accurate in applying everything that we do in the show? No, but hey, that's just a theory. Our next correction comes from Voidcheck, who says, Hey Kyle, awesome episode like always. <laughs> I have a correction about the part with the force calculation. Voidcheck goes on to say that I am assuming that when you are hit by a falcon punch, the opponent is solid and will not be destroyed by this punch. Therefore, all of the force is being transferred to them and perfectly, and so they would be launched as we see in the game. But Voidcheck points out, well, based on, you know, just the strength of stuff, the falcon punch would probably just punch right through something like a cannonball through the hull of a ship, a ye olde pirate ship. And realistically speaking, Captain Falcon would punch right through your face, like the end of 30 Days of Night with Josh Hartnett. You guys remember that? But the nerdiest correction at the time I'm filming this episode, I'm giving to one-time super nerd already, Anders Kilmark, who says, hey Kyle, great video as always. Anders says something very interesting that I didn't even think about. You described the force imparting supposing the punch lands, but the Falcon punch is one of the most telegraphed moves in the game, period. What if he misses? Suddenly, all of that force is distributed across his arm as the tensile strength of his bones, ligaments, muscles, and tendons, they fight to stop the fist at the moment of full extension. If his arms couldn't handle those stresses, his arm might shoot off, either tearing off from the shoulder or shredding the whole darn thing in a suborbital trajectory. If this is a real risk, then it would behoove Captain Falcon to resist the temptation to show us his moves. <laughs> Anders, I love thinking about what if the Falcon punch is only successful, it's only safe to do if you can actually land the punch. Otherwise, the punch is so forceful, it would rip off his body like a rocket punch and fly down like an F-Zero X-Track really fast. I didn't even think about that. Obviously, the answer to this kind of thing would be that, well, Captain Falcon is Captain Falcon, and if he misses his punch, as he does in the game, very often because people are floating around and you're playing as Fox and you're always trying to reflect stuff and you're blocking my Bs as I'm trying to charge B, and then when I charge B, then you press down on the control stick and you just jump down to the lower section of, of the Yoshi storybook level and I'm trying to hit you and then I jump up and then Kirby slams me with a stupid explosion smash and I fly off, but he, when I hit him with a B finally after charging it, then he just floats back in like, 
<laughs> like it's nothing. Then I get hit by Ness, who sucks because he always has to hit himself back onto the stage. He's annoying because he's a little kid. You're a two-time super nerd, Anders. Congratulations. I gotta go work some stuff out. And now, moving right along, it is time for this week's episode of Because Science. And this week's episode of Because Science is... What is the real science behind Dr. Manhattan's Azurian superpowers? That means bluish. That's right, in this week's episode of Because Science, we're looking at the big blue boy and his big blue butt to see if we can explain those big blue superpowers. Yep, that's right, in Watchmen, he's naked, but we don't care. He might be a god, but that's not gonna stop us from questioning what he is, what he's about, what he might be made, how can he teleport, why he blue though, we're gonna do it. Ah! But before we get to old Blueby, go watch the latest episode of Because Science if you haven't yet all about the Falcon Punch, and leave me all of your best, nerdiest comments, corrections, and questions at youtube.com slash because science, Facebook com slash because science and at because science on Instagram and and don't forget we are filming this episode of footnotes on World Mental Health Day this won't be coming out on that day but I want to remind and encourage everyone that mental health is health you are your brain the mind is what the body does. Your mind, your brain, your body, they're all connected. We separate mental and physical health and we may stigmatize mental health over physical health, but a sound body and a sound mind is all a part of being healthy. Like you wouldn't expect someone with a broken leg to run, you can't always expect someone who may have some mental health issue to just be fine. So in honor of Mental Health Day, if you need help, seek it, do not feel ashamed, do not feel insecure, you can get treatment, you can talk to people, there are those to help. That's what we have science and doctors and researchers for. Be well.